Hi all and welcome back to Professor True Love's Concepts for Nurses series. This is Professor Terry True Love. And this is our last episode concerning EKG and rhythm strips. And in this episode, we will be reviewing ST segment abnormalities. Sources for this episode include Cone's Flip and See ECG, 4th edition. Recall what the ST segment is and that normally between the QRS complex and the T wave, the rhythm strip should return to the isoelectric line. Further, recall that this ST segment represents the beginning part of ventricular repolarization. Any abnormalities in this segment may reflect changes in the ventricles caused by disease or chemical imbalances or other problems. However, in isolation, ST segments have no clinical significance. ST segment changes are not important unless they are collaborated by other clinical findings, including health assessment findings, laboratory findings, other diagnostic findings such as from x-ray, an angiogram, or an EKG. The term nonspecific ST segment changes is the most accurate way to describe these different changes, whether or not there are clinically important changes that are found with the patient. Therefore, do not ignore these nonspecific ST changes because they may be important. It is the responsibility of the person that discovers these ST changes to report it to the provider because these ST changes may be clinically significant or they may not be clinically significant. And that is because factors affecting the ST segment, the T and the U waves include intrinsic myocardial disease such as myocarditis, ischemia, infarction, infiltrative or myopathic processes, or medications such as digoxin, quinidine, tricyclic antidepressant, and many other classifications of medications. Other factors include electrolyte abnormalities of the levels of potassium, magnesium, or calcium, and neurogenic factors such as a stroke, a hemorrhage, brain trauma, or a brain tumor. Further, Certain metabolic factors such as hypoglycemia and hyperventilation can affect these ways as can things such as atrial repolarization. In other words, the fast atrial waves may actually pull the ST segment out of alignment when you look at this rhythm strip. It really isn't. It's just an artifact from the rhythm. Also, ventricular conduction abnormalities and rhythms originating in the ventricles can also cause what looks like ST segment changes. Sometimes there are ST changes, but these are associated with other cardiac conditions. In this case, the ST change is because of alterations in the sequence of ventricular depolarization in such rhythms as bundle branch blocks, fascicular blocks, nonspecific, nonspecific idioventricular cardiac disease, Wolf Parkinson's white pre excitation and premature ventricular complexes or other ventricular arrhythmias. Primary ST changes may be caused by medications effects, such as with digoxin or quinidine, because of electrolyte abnormalities, as in hypokalemia, because of neurologic effects, such as in a subarachnoid hemorrhage, or because of ischemia infarction, and inflammation from a STEMI, an ST-elevated myocardial infarction. Sometimes the characteristics of the ST segment changes help us to determine why those ST changes are being caused. In this case, we notice the digitalis effect and the characteristic curve of the ST segment, which looks vaguely like a fancy mustache. In this case, we look at a portrait of Salvador Dali and see his mustache, and it should remind us of the digitalis effect. Potassium levels have a significant effect on the nature of the 
ST segment. Potassium is the major intracellular ion that is involved with cardiac cycle. Changes in blood serum levels can cause significant changes in the ECG and in the clinical condition. A high potassium level is known as hyperkalemia, while a low potassium level is known as hypokalemia. As the serum potassium levels become more and more abnormal, so too does the ECG and the corresponding ST segment. Here we have an example of ST changes in early hyperkalemia. Note that the T wave is narrow, tall, and peaked. If suspected, more than one lead should be reviewed. As hyperkalemia becomes more pronounced, so too will the ECG change. And in this case, the PR interval becomes longer, the P wave loses its amplitude and may completely disappear, and the QRS complex starts to widen. Notice also the height of the T wave in comparison to the R wave. With severe hyperkalemia, you notice the widened QRS complexes, and further, the QRS complexes merge with a corresponding T waves. This is how profound the ST segment change is. It makes the ECG look like a series of sine waves. Left untreated, cardiac arrest will result. On the other hand, with hypokalemia, the T waves become flattened. There is a more prominent U wave. The ST segment be may become depressed and the T wave may become inverted. Unlike hyperkalemia, these additional changes are not related to the degree, that is, how much hypokalemia exists. Part of the process of reviewing the ST segment also involves reviewing the J-point because the J-point can reveal early repolarization. Usually the J-point is concave and upward and ends with a large symmetrical T-wave. However, if it curves downward like a frown, this could indicate a problem. Although, in the past it's been associated with athletic fitness, new research indicates that it also may be associated with certain types of heart failure. ST segment changes may also reveal acute pericarditis. With acute pericarditis, the ST segment is concave and deflects upward in most leads except AVR. There is no reciprocal ST segment depression, except perhaps in AVR. Unlike early repolarization, the T waves are usually of low amplitude and the heart rate is usually increased you may see a PR segment depression, which is a manifestation of atrial injury from the acute pericarditis. Those changes are reflected in the, this fragment of strip where we see the concave upward facing ST elevation along with PR segment depression that is the hallmark of acute pericarditis. Some other factors to consider when evaluating your ST segments. If they are found with a wandering baseline, this is known as pseudo-ST depression. Your treatment is to fix the leads. It may be seen with certain atrial and sinus tachycardias. In that case, resolve the tachyarrhythmia. It may also be seen with hyperventilation, so correct the respiratory rate, and it may be seen in subendocardial infarction. Treat the myocardial infarction. In these examples, notice the difference between a normal ST segment, the ST segment elevation noted in a STEMI, and the ST segment depression found in N STEMI. To review, report and track down the causes of any ST changes, and assess other diagnostic criteria when you note ST changes, including a physical assessment, laboratory results, particularly cardiac enzymes, looking for other diagnostics, including imaging and 12-lead EKG. That does conclude this episode concerning EKG changes. However, there are more cardiac episodes coming in the future. In the meantime, I hope you learned a little bit I hope you come back to watch more, and if you do, we will see you then.